Hello and welcome to our overview of the importation of an L5K file and a basic gateway block within Crimson 3. Further from our previous video into basic communication setup, the importation of an L5K file allows for rapid development of your application by using the native form of the Allen Bradley file system. After the, import, after the configuration of your Allen Bradley controller, you may import the L5K directly to, to Crimson. In this instance here, I have an extensive list. And like all control platforms, there are numerous tags, a majority of which would not be addressed at, at an IO platform. And thus, we will need to select which tags from the imported L5K file that you wish to address within your, aspect, uh, your application, such as what I'll be showing today briefly in Gateway Blocks. So today I'll just pick a couple of tags at random to illustrate that. As you can see, once I touch and hit on those, the particular configuration and type of that tag becomes available at the bottom of the screen. So I'll just play with these three tags today. Once I've, uh, I have obtained that, it's, the school's out in regards to how you, where you should actually put your gateway blocks, but those blocks now are available. Today I'll just move some data to and from a Modbus device directly to the memory location of the Allen Bradley. What I shall do is I will just do all blocking underneath the Modbus device, but you could thus in turn do that directly under the Allen Bradley if you wish to do it from a supervisory point up or a base device out. It's up to you, the programmer. So looking at this, I have this particular Modbus device. You would go down to the bottom of your working pane menu to add gateway block. Today I'll add two. Please note the color is green currently. Once I touch on this block, I have the uh, pick, I have the all available pre map registers, such as with all drivers that are in Crimson, and I will look at the 40,001 register. This block I shall make one, two in uh, length. And when touching on that block, you then will have all available devices here. You could also navigate to data tags if you wish to drag them across to the device if you want to do scaling, but we'll cover that at a later point. So today I'm going to pick directly on PLC 6, which is the Allen Bradley one, which I have imported the L5K file for. PLC 6, the tags that I have mapped are now available here, and being a word for word, as you can see, I am moving the Allen Bradley drive speed reference directly into the 40,000 register within this Modbus device. I am also going to pick uh, grind underscore sequence stop and put that into this one. For argument's sake, if you wish that variable here, the 40,000 register of this Modbus device to be mapped into the PLC drive speed as a reference, you touch on the top of the block here, noting the direction of the arrow, and the direction here can be changed. Once sitting in there, as you can see, the blocks turn red and we are now taking the 40,001 register and placing that directly into plc6.drive.drv underscore. Subsequently, uh, for a binary type register, we'll say for argument's sake, we're just looking at the digital inputs of that particular Modbus device. I can simply just add a simple register, of course, picking whichever register you require. Touching on that register, then I have replace me available. So this now is pushing to that position. Alternatively, if you wish, you could, of course, do this under the Allen Bradley. It's really up to the user under which syntax I think is correct of mapping from a device to, or to a device to and from at which location. So at this one in particular, I can now, if I'm doing it at this level, I can now do and pick them directly from the, the non-mapped file registers and I'm having drive bits or bridge bits sorry sitting here and I could pick from any device that I am configured to so I can pick it from a memory address here out of a holding register and directly out of PLC3 and place that word as a word from whatever register that is applicable and they can do them in block format at that point. Another very, very handy aspect of this type of mapping is if, from an Allen Bradley perspective, that you wish to build an alarm word. You can, in Crimson 3, quickly expand this to bits. And I could, for argument's sake, drag bits 
or bits in or out to build a word within another structure. So as you can see, the gateway block can be incredibly powerful. Another obvious uh, application that is done quite extensively is not necessarily from, say, a field orientated bus, is from two prominent PLCs. We have our Alan Bradley, but another very um, large install PLC would say be the GE using the SRTB driver. Quite simply, very, very simple format. And in this particular instance here, we're using the SRTP, TCP IP driver, which of course uses the memory based addressing format. So we'll use in the percent R's, and as you can see, the entire memory format will be sitting here. I could select several blocks and of course map directly from map tags from our Alan Bradley directly straight into a GE. Of course, if you need to do any conversions uh, within the data on the way, at that point there, we would probably use any of the tags. Manipulate the data and then move the tags from this particular field from this resource pane to the particular memory address within the target controller. I trust that gives you a very quick and brief overview of gateway blocks, which will be uh, extended on over the course of our subsequent videos when we start to use tags moving in and out of particular registers, and we shall build up a fairly extensive project. So thank you for your time and join us again for when we move through the, the uh, different aspects of communications, such as our USB and services. Thank you.